Are you struggling to camera track your scene? Well, you might consider adding tracking markers to help you out, but of course we don't want to see those in the final render, so let's talk about how to erase them for the final composite. Like always, if you want to work along with us, you can find everything I use, including my blend file, in the description below for you to download. So inside of Blender, the first thing we want to do is set up some render settings. So I want to come over here to the render properties. And since we're only going to be working with videos in this tutorial, we want to come down and set it to be standard uh, view transform instead of filmic. Next thing we need to do is match the frame rate of our footage. So I'm going to come up here to the output properties, go to frame rate and 29.97 and the resolution is 1080p. So that is good. Okay, so now we are ready to go into compositing. So come to the compositing workspace. I'm going to hit use nodes and it automatically sets up these nodes. The render layers is only for if you're rendering out of the 3D viewport. So we're not going to be doing that today. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then we want to go ahead and shift A and add a movie clip node and just place that right there and go ahead and open our footage. So here it is, the tracker footage. I'm going to open that clip and then we can go ahead uh, with the node wrangler add on. We want to come up here to edit preferences add-ons and just make sure you have that enabled uh, so make sure that's checked and then so with that we can hold shift control and then click to add a viewer node and then if we just hit uh, v we can zoom out and then alt v to zoom in just so you can view it a little bit easier so you can see this is the clip that we're working with i have this table that would normally be a huge nightmare to motion track since we don't have a lot of detail in the actual table so i went ahead and placed some tracking markers down to hopefully help us be able to camera track our footage and place a 3d thing into the scene and so what we want to do first is basically isolate the area where the actual markers are because we don't want to replace everything we just want to replace the markers themselves so what we can do if i actually come up here to one of the channels let's say the blue channel you can see that the markers themselves are very bright and the areas around the markers are very dark and this actually has to do with the luminance value of each specific pixel so basically the brighter the pixel is the higher luminance value that uh, color data actually has and so that's why a white sheet of our paper up here if i actually come back out to here our white sheet has a much higher luminance value in the pixel data compared to this table which has a lower luminance value and so what we can do is go ahead and shift a i'm going to go ahead and add a luminance key and what that is going to allow us to do is basically select a range of our luminance values that it's going to use to make a map so if we have this high and low value here, we can go ahead and shift control click the mat option. And if I just bring this high lower, you can tell that the screen is getting much brighter. And if I also bring this low higher, then it makes all the lower uh, luminance go away. All that to say, basically what we want to do is select a low and high range to where we're soloing out the luminance values for our markers. So I'm gonna, just going to drag the low range until we're kind of getting out a lot of the lower luminance values. And then I can drag this high range and I basically just want to try to uh, limit the range to somewhere where this is giving us a result like this to where these markers are completely white now. And we can mess around with that, uh, with that a little bit later. Okay, so now that we have a good range for our luminance key, we can go ahead and add a alpha over uh, so we can combine our results. I want to set the mat to be our factor. And then I want to set the original movie clip to be the first image in the image socket. And now you can see nothing has really changed. And that's because if we set this to another color, you can now see that we only have our trackers being affected by our bottom image. There are some other red parts of the image that it is affecting, so we'll have to deal with that later. But for now, this is uh, good enough for what we need. So now that we are soloing out the trackers, what we actually need to do is place the original footage uh, back underneath of this footage and then shift it over a little bit to kind of give us the same color data. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and shift A, add a translate node. Just going to put that there. And then we need to connect the image into here and then the image of the translate into this bottom socket. And so now with that set up, if I go ahead and move the image along the X, you can see that now our markers are kind of disappearing uh, little by little. And if I actually go ahead and just view what we're doing with the translate, you can see that basically we're taking the original footage and we're just moving it over and shifting that over slightly compared to the original. So here's the original and then here's the translation we did. And so since we have a luminance key going into our factor, basically everything that was read before is just going to be our shifted over footage down below. So you can see it's getting rid of most of the markers, but we can still see the edges. And so what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and try to increase our mat in order to give something that blends in the markers to our background translation. So what I can do is go ahead and add 
I'm going to add a dilate and a road node. And what that will basically do is allow us to increase the mass size of our markers. So if I just shift control click that, we can view what that is doing. So if I set the distance up, you can see that it actually increases our markers right here. Just makes them a little bit bigger. And then the opposite happens if I uh, decrease it. It just, uh, you know, kind of decreases it. This is actually useful in uh, chroma keying and a lot of other keying stuff. So that's just a note to use in Blender. I'm going to set the distance up you know, maybe around a 10. So you can see just before and after, if I mute that, you can see it just adds a little bit more area um, to our actual marker. So it's getting giving us a, you know, kind of buffer area. And then what we want to do to kind of uh, match into the scene, because if I come over here, you'll still notice that there's a lot of issues happening right now. And uh, one thing is to do with the blurriness of the mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and blur our mask to kind of feather the edges a little bit. So I'm going to add a blur. And then I'm just going to uh, select this. We'll say like around a 13. Uh, that is looking better. So you can see the edges are, you know, kind of bleeding in a little bit more. Uh, now what is happening right now is that we are actually uh, seeing some of the markers, the edges of the markers here. And that's because we just haven't uh, trans translated our uh, movie clip over enough. So what we need to do is just play around with this X value until we keep moving it. We keep moving it. And now you can see that most of our markers are uh, gone and you can play around with different results. You can maybe even play around with moving it in the Y direction, but I don't really uh, suggest that since it might introduce some like shadow issues uh, depending on your footage. Uh, so the X is just fine for us. And now you can see that the before uh, and after, we can now see that most of our markers are gone. Um, so that is looking really good. However, we still have that issue that I was talking about before where we have all of this being affected by the uh, red as we saw before. It's now uh, basically just doing that same thing that we did for the markers, but it's being applied there. So in order to fix that, we actually need to go ahead and create a mask so it only affects the region of the tracking markers. So in order to do that, I'm going to come up here to the plus section, go to VFX, and I'm going to go to this masking section. And we need to go ahead and just open up our tracker footage right here. And what I want to do is I basically want to just have a mask kind of going around this area. Uh, and then we'll, you know, combine the mask with our actual luminance key. And basically just solo out the tracking markers and leaving all the other luminance uh, alone. So what I can do is I want to go ahead and create a mask. I'm going to hit new up here. I'm just going to type, uh, you know, marker mask. You can name it whatever you want. And then to actually add a mask, it's the same as camera tracking. We can just hold control and then click. And then I'm going to drag. Uh, you can see that this uh, little line comes out. That's basically just, you know, how, uh, you know, beveled the bezier of the actual uh, mask is. So it's always nice to just click and drag and make those lines uh, longer. Um, you can add as many points as you want, but you want to try to stick to as few as you can get away with. And then to end the thing, I'm just going to hold control and then click our little uh, first frame over here. And so now we basically have a mask just soloing out this little area over here. And what you can do is you can turn on the auto keying mode down here so that our keyframes are saved. Um, and then, you know, go throughout the footage and move the mask and everything. A nicer way to go uh, go through this is to actually go ahead and track one of our dots and ba basically parent that track to our mask. So instead of having to actually manually move the mask, uh, we can track it to an object. So I'm going to come up here to the tracking window now. So we can go ahead and go to match previous frame and then hit normalize. And then all the other settings should be fine. And I just want to hold control and click there. And then if I hit control T, we can start tracking that forward. And you can see it stops around uh, frame 206. So we can go ahead and set the end frame to be 206 right there. And so now that we have a track, we can come back out to the mask section. And you can see our track is now there. What I want to do is I want to select our mask. So I'm going to just going to hit A to select all these points, make sure they're all highlighted. And now I have this track uh, here. Uh, it's also selected because you can see it's in white. And now if I hit parent, what will happen is it'll actually parent our mask to that tracking object. So if I come over here, you can see that now our mask is basically moving along with our track. So now that we have it parented, we can, you know, adjust it however we need. So I notice uh, I want to move this out a little bit just to give it like kind of a little bit of space to move around our scene somewhere like around here. And then let's come to the very end of the footage. So frame 206 right here. And you can see that some of our mask is getting cut off uh, because, again, it's trying to track onto that. So I actually want to come out here and kind of just uh, keyframe a little bit. 
Again, uh, you do want to make sure you have the auto keyframe button here uh, or else it won't save your actual inputs um, and you'll have to press I and set manual keyframes and everything. But basically, you just want to come throughout your footage and make sure through all kind of ranges we have the uh, the markers in view but nothing else of high luminance in that area. So that is actually looking pretty good result uh, for me and that's probably what I'm going to stick with. So... Uh, now we're actually done with the masking. So let's come back out to compositing. And of course, uh, if we go in here, you'll notice that we have all this, uh, you know, white value out here again. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add our mask in. So I'm going to go ahead and then shift a, add a mask. We want to select our mask. So here's our marker mask that we made earlier. And then we just want to combine these two. So in order to combine these two, you'll notice that this is purely white. And then every area that we want to keep is also white. And so the operation to do there, if you want to combine uh, things that are white, uh, is to use a multiply. So we're going to go ahead and add a mix node to mix them together. Just want to add uh, these two together. And then instead of mix, we can set this to be multiply. And so what that's going to do is basically take all the white values here and then multiply them by all the values here. And so since black is equal to zero, if you multiply those out, it'll be zero. And so that's why these areas are completely black because one times zero is zero. And then all the areas that are one uh, white or one in this case here. Uh, and the areas that are white uh, here, one times one is one. And so it keeps these datas and um, it removes the black data. Okay, so we still have a little bit of issues here. You can see that we're having some uh, specs here um, and that shouldn't be too big of an issue, but I do wanna try to get those out as much as possible. So I'm just gonna play around with my luminance again, trying to get some of those out. There we go. Uh, so now we have some of those out and now Finally, what we can do is replace the multiply with our factor of our alpha over node. And now if we view that, we should see that we now have all of this area fixed and we're only focusing on the markers in the middle. Okay, so just to recap, we have a luminance key going into our base footage, which is giving us where the uh, actual markers are. We're making that a little bit bigger just so we have more room to work with and then blurring that a little bit so it blends into our background a little bit more. And then we are taking a mask that we did um, just so it affects the tracker area and multiplying those together just so it's not affecting any other area outside of our tracking markers. And then finally, we're using that as a factor for our original movie clip. And then uh, we're translating the original movie clip over a little bit and then using that as the background for our alpha over, which is basically just removing the markers in the background. So you do want to kind of come throughout your footage and make sure everything is uh, lining up. Uh, I don't really notice anything for my scene. Uh, if you are moving kind of up and down, you might have some issues. Uh, and if you are moving towards, the, you know, the tracking markers, you might have some issues as well. And so it's really just cleaning up, you know, the translation and maybe the mask up a little bit. But I don't really notice anything for my scene. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out. You want to make sure you have it in the composite. And then if we come over here, I'm going to set the uh, sample count uh, down to one uh, for the render just uh, because we're not rendering anything in the viewport. And it's going to speed up the render just a little bit. I'm going to hit in uh, to open up this menu over here. Good options and open CL to help render on the GPU. And then we can go ahead and go to the output section. Since it's going to render so fast, I'm just going to render as a movie clip. So I'm just going to save that. And then we can hit accept. Go to PNG, I'm going to set it to FFmpeg. Go to encoding, I'm going to set it to a quick time and then set it to high quality. Then we can save and go ahead and render out the animation. So here is the final result that we got. Hopefully you guys got something similar and understand uh, the workflow in order to remove markers in a scene. If you guys did like this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing and liking the video just to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.